for me, I, I freaking regret my decision there at the end. I should have gone for it, fourth down, and uh, you know, told the team that I should have gone for it. So. What up, man? How are you? Some cameras up? Yeah. Yeah, right on. I'm good, dude. How you been? Good been weekend? Very good. Yeah, really good weekend. Good, good. Yeah. Go blue. Yeah. yeah, they look good. That Lions game, though, man. I don't know. I hate the phrase same old Lions, but when you see shit like that happen, how is it not same old Lions? Well, we can get into it, yeah. you know, we, and we will. Yep. And the Wolverines and the Spartans at the end of the show. We'll put up the number if you, uh, you know, you want to comment on the same old Lions. <laughs> <laughs> right but first thing is uh like karen blew us off yep you know we can't get these mondays straight but uh yeah we caught up with her <laughs> at the detroit athletic club pulling up in her mercedes and i want to welcome red back here in the sock puppet theater just for some visual eye candy back there <laughs> it looks like you just came up from downstairs on a one of those dumb waiters yeah, he's on break he's smoking he's a fucking her- joint look at this guy <laughs> fucking red but th- right. thankfully, there was paparazzi out. We got paparazzi. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, hippie out there. Pop- you can't hide, Karen. <laughs> Go ahead, roll it. Mrs. Dumas, Mrs. Dumas, over here. <laughs> hippie Jesus from NBN News. What are you wearing today? You look fantastic, Your Majesty. Well, you know, after the viewers said uh, they were talking about my sweatshirt last week, I figured I was going to put on a sweater. It's called, you know, so I'm good. How you doing? Good and you. Who are you meeting today? Who's more important than the no bullshit news hour? Nobody is more important, but you know, we gotta see how the other side hangs out sometimes. So I'm to see my friends over at the DAC. Do you have a uh, apology for Charlie for missing the show? <laughs> yes. Miss you guys. Can you say hello to Harry and Megan for us? Is that his parents? <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Dumas. <laughs> <laughs> this is hippie Jesus' parents. They must be proud of the guy. He's out there doing paparazzi. Oh, she's out at the athletic club instead of here. Wow. Wait, man, what does that mean, how the other half lives? I don't know. The fuck are we, chopped liver? It was a good distraction. It's because the walls are falling down, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Kara doing her real job, advising people yeah. at the player's house, Detroit Athletic Club. All right, listen, we got, we got a, a lot to do, and it's Monday, so we don't want to drag it on. You remember uh, Friday, mm-hmm. Thursday night, because we're on Thursday nights now and Monday. We were breaking news to you that Alyssa Slotkin, the congresswoman from, I guess it's the 7th Congressional District. They realigned everything. Um, She's renting a house from a lobbyist who gives her money, whom she does his bidding in Washington. That was exclusive. We were breaking that. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you know it? It goes crazy. Yeah, as it should. It goes all over the country. Yeah, And this Sunday... She's debating uh, Republican Tom Barrett, her challenger, on Channel 4 Flashpoint with Devin Skillion. How you doing, Devin? Again, sorry, brother. Nothing personal about that cold open. With, you know, the little <laughs> lock it, rock it, sock it, puts it in. In my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Red. So it was a very good, well-moderated debate. It here's, was, yeah. Here's, here's the question about where do you live? It's come to light that you've been living in an apartment in Lansing that is owned by a donor to your campaign. Uh, 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 a, uh, I guess we'd have to call him a lobbyist. I mean, even though he's no. not registered as a lobbyist, but he is no. a vice president for government relations yeah. uh, for. Um, uh, I, I wrote. Uh, not, not- Pause. No. <laughs> He's a lobbyist. He is a lobbyist. He lobbies for his own company, he's governmental lo- affairs. Tell the truth yeah don't get in a semantical argument about it we all know what it is yeah that's what it is yeah you know what i mean and that's what we want cleaned up no (laughs) because she knows you know what it shows that she knows that doesn't sound good she knows the word lobbyist is a dirty word yeah wave Mm -hmm. um he, uh, which we come to, I mean, uh, someone who's in government relations is, is basically a lot. Way to go, Devin. But uh, uh, the, the, the claim is, is that you've worked on behalf of that company. Is there anything that doesn't quite this pass is, the smell This test is honestly, here? this is like the political desperation. I rent at fair market value. I've shown my lease. 
he is a rent he is someone who is renting his apartment he is my landlord and i think the thing that has really pushed me is that tom barrett has insinuated that i'm living with this man huh? if you believe i'm living with a man who is not what? my husband in the same apartment just say it man like just come out but i think that there is a push here that is beyond the normal the the idea that he is in government relations a hundred percent i i don't challenge that okay he's can I ask you something, Charlie? Yeah, yeah. Did, did anybody ever say that she was living with this guy? How, there? How no. Did, how did it turn into that? Like, oh, well, she turned it into it's that. It's clever political theater to turn yourself into the victim. Sure. Nobody said you were living with the guy. What we know is the guy's registered to vote at that apartment. His son's registered to vote at that apartment. His business LLC, that's its corporate headquarters. Yeah. Right? The question would be if we're going to talk about living with the guy, where does Slotkin's husband live? Because he's registered to vote in Florida. He, he, he is? Yes. Okay. He works in D.C. And then would you say, Bernie, would you, you read something that uh, just because it came up in Twitter, he changed? Oh, she uh, changed her Twitter feed. He lives in Holly, Michigan. Oh, changed oh, her Holly. Twitter feed. Okay. He now lives in Holly, Michigan, where hmm. she actually lives, right? Yeah. Because that was her old district. I'll give her that. But district here, and she moved to Lansing. Like, if you're going to represent Lansing, buy a fucking house. Zach, thank you. Yeah. Michigan manufacturing company guy. But the idea that somehow there's something bad going on. If I weren't paying rent, that'd be one thing. But I'm paying for market rent. I, I, I've got. I want to get to your situation rather than let you both weigh in on those. Whoa. Let me let me move to what you. Yeah. How many apartments are for rent in Lansing? Well, yeah, no, you know? Barrett knows. <laughs> Wait, oh, okay, go ahead. He gets into that Keeps after the, apparently he's got his own little thing. So yeah, last week, got, which yeah. is that you were there's been a complaint filed against you that you used about forty thousand dollars from money that was dedicated to your state senate campaign and moved it into your federal campaign running for Congress. Paul, which uh, federal? Did he do that? Is this what we're getting into? Okay, here's the thing. You, I don't think you. There's a rule here. Either you can't move the federal money into the state or you can't move the state into the federal, right? Okay. It's like everything Whitmer's raised for her run for governor, I think she's going to spend because you can't take it federally. And every politician never abuses uh, their campaign money, right? Well, if he did it, right? Yeah. Then that's an, an, an issue. You should know better and your team should know better. Yeah. Right? Uh, to me, that seems like a very minor issue. Personally, that's but, just me, though. But both of these are re this is ridiculous. <laughs> well, not, this now you're getting to the crux of it, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're, look, look, man, we're dying out here, yeah. and the decisions being made in D.C. And what's the, what's the media giving us? This little pee pee bullshit, mm -hmm. right? You're not looking at macroeconomics. You're not looking at the causes of inflation. You're not looking at what we're doing in Ukraine. Right, this? Okay, let, let's see what he says. Election roll frowns on mingling, mingling dollars yeah. that way. That I guess the suggestion is that defrauds donors. You want to react to this? It's just totally meritless, of course. And it's an organization that's endorsed my opponent, uh, contributed to her campaign that's just causing uh, frivolous uh, you know, complaints. Um, but I will say, look, this idea that somebody is living with a lobbyist when there are 1,513 available apartments oh. in Lansing, Michigan, living, as of today. Do you, do you really believe she's sorry, living with a lobbyist? With, with, my husband living, and I would like to talk with you about that. Living you're in the residence, that I'm living with another man. So she, did she that. claims that she is no living saying in the that. residence he did. owned yeah. by a lobbyist. Of course, where he, he is also registered to vote. I don't know the circumstances of that arrangement, but I am saying it is un improper for a member of Congress to be I, living in a residence sorry. owned by a lobbyist where they are both registered to vote. I can agree with that. He's right about that. But yeah, he's the guy insinuating because he just said it. Which is okay. Of, which I didn't take it that way when that news first came out. It was like, no, you're getting, you're renting from a friend, a lobbyist, somebody you've worked with. I don't like the way that feels. I like what you said. If you're going to represent that area, live in the area, I know you don't have to, but buy a house. Yeah, and you couldn't find another house. You know, it's it's mumbo. Well, come on, it was easy. Freaking right? yeah. jumbo. Yeah. Um, look, we've been. They're only going to do two debates, and you know, since. A lot of this has to do with what we're reporting here. Mm -hmm. We've invited him to sit down and debate. Red was raising his hand. It was, yeah. Did you have a question, I, sir? I got an answer for slocking. Okay. You and your husband can come move into Normandy with me and make you look better than you do now. <laughs> Isn't that what Rashida Tlaib or 
John James are living? You seen them around? <laughs> Not lately. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got any more stuff from the Normandy coming? Last one was really good, man. Small teaser, yes. Ooh, all right. <laughs> all right. A lot of action, huh? So Red living in the Last Chance Hotel, you know, since it's his, his wife put him out. And yeah. That's all he could afford. Cause. I thought this was a window I was creeping through, but apparently I don't even know where the hell I live no more. It's <laughs> red in the sock puppet theater, back, trying it. to figure out what to do with that back there. All right, you got any more on this? Uh, well, they did talk about inflation. Do you want to hear their takes oh, yeah, on I'll inflation? Did, I mean, that, that's the issue, that's right? That's the issue. E- that's economics. Yep. Okay. Voters have to say that they're not as well off after uh, electing you two years ago um, because uh, energy prices have come down somewhat, but inflation is still sky high, especially the cost of food. Yeah, I hear about it all the time. I know that it Whoa, is affecting you. You hear about it all the time. Isn't it affecting you too? Where do you hear about that? On K Street? <laughs> where, Florida? Like uh, Holly? Lansing? You're, where? Of course, it's killing us. <laughs> it's, it's the issue. Well, I mean... If it's affecting everybody, it's affecting you too. Slack in. You would think. Just say it. Don't say, oh, man, I'm hearing it. It makes you sound very disconnected. Maybe I'm nitpicking. Yes, Red, did you say something? Apparently, she doesn't go grocery shopping because uh, the grocery store tells you. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow, great. <laughs> Apparently, she doesn't go grocery shopping because she wouldn't hear it. She'd see it. Exactly. Exactly. Choices. They are making different decisions because of inflation. Mm -hmm. I think the difference for me in between myself and the approach that maybe Mr. Barrett takes is, you know, do we complain about it and use it as a political cudgel, you know, a political baton? Or are we doing something about it, or at least trying, since everyone's dealing with inflation the world over? If there was a silver bullet on inflation, it would have been fired. But the question is, do we talk about it as a political talking point or just try to do something? It is a political talking point. Yeah. So politics is. Yeah. My way of life is evaporating. Magic bullet. Look, we had Dr. Richard Wolff. He's a socialist. He's a world-renowned economist. We agree. We're spending too much money. We're printing money. We're deficit spending. The money supplies out there. And the, the more money you create, the less valuable money is. Mm-hmm. Trillions it, we've printed. She's incumbent. Well, not for that, but she's she's in Congress, so it's fair to attack her on that. I do agree with her. I want to hear, okay, what are we going to do to fix it? i tell you what you do to fix it. Here's, you're not going to like it, right? Number one. Well, the, fixing inflation is painful. The, the Fed's doing it, right? You're going to have to raise interest rates. You're going to have to make it hard for people to borrow so they don't buy stuff that drives up the price of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, that's where we're at. Sorry, yeah. but Americans are grown up. They're doing it anyway. You have to live through it. Right. Mm -hmm. Two, you can't come out with uh, Inflation Reduction Act that doesn't reduce inflation. uh, Some chip manufacturing, a quarter billion, a trillion dollars for that. The what else we got? The Build Back Better, the American Rescue Plan. You can't just print money. Yeah. Right. And as the Fed raises rates, we're coming out. We're giving student loan forgiveness. Like you're, you're pumping more fake dollars into it it's almost like you're fighting the fed and what they're trying to do you, you want to hear something that that you're not going to like this this is economics and i'm not alone in it the government can't meet its obligations right it can't collect taxes because trump did that mm-hmm. cut all the tax everybody thought it was great now you see why it's not so if corporations increase taxes right or if we increase taxes on corporations their income tax they're going to pass it on to us, the consumers. We're not going to buy as much. So what is purchased, the government is going to be collecting tax, which is drawing money out of the system, mm-hmm. right? It's also going to force people to consume less. Mm-hmm. So you normally don't raise taxes in a recession. You want to stimulate it. Yeah. But we're in stagflation. Uh, we are a recession, which is... It's going down, economic activity is going down, but prices are still going up. Mm -hmm. You're in a really weird spot. So you have to be adult about it and not say it's it's a cudgel. Yeah. Because if you've got anything in a stock market, you've already lost 20% on that, right? Yeah. Because the Dow took a great big gigantic shit. Then inflation's cooking at 10%. You've lost another 10% just because the dollar doesn't buy as much. much. Mm -hmm. So you've almost lost a third of your 401k. That's how bad it is. So don't tell me, don't sit there and say it's a cudgel. It's 
It's our present, it's our future, and we're worried about it. Magic bullet. Yeah. You're voting on this bullshit. Stop voting on this bullshit. Boy, you should have done the debate with her. Your answer was much better than his. Well, again, uh, we've asked them to come. Barrett has agreed. Okay. Tom Barrett has agreed, and we're waiting to hear from Slotkin. Okay, good, come fair enough. and do the people's yeah. debate. Yeah. Because if you want to win, where's my camera? Which one? Which that one, one, over there. Right there? Uh, far. To right your, there? Uh, I don't know where it is. No way where. You right had there? it right. <laughs> right there. Okay. I used to do that on Fox, too. Which was my camera? I've seen that, camera, yeah. camera two? Camera. One time, they're re- robotic now, remote yeah. control, because yeah, 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 yeah. they, they fired everybody that made any of money. Course. And the robots Those went crazy union. one day, and they're bashing into the into the set and everything. I'm like, oh, it must be that one. Just like an Amazon warehouse. Oh, my God. All right. Joe will find your camera. Look, if you want to reach... The swing and independent voters of District 7, this is the place. This is where they're at, and they're the ones that asked me. The invitation's extended. Come, no prefab, no preset questions, no pretense. You come, you sit, you roll. Yeah, you have a conversation. Right. Yeah, just like Lucido and Mongo did um, for Holding the Onions. That was a great conversation. <laughs> I thought it was. Mongo going back to Emmett Till, man. He got it. Yeah. He got it. You know, that's what he does. That's fine. All right. What, what, do we get anything on, on what, Barrett in, in abortion? Yeah, this is um, him being asked about his stance on abortion because that's the big issue. And wait, for the life of me, before we get to it. Yeah. Um, we're talking about a seat for Congress, a swing seat, a hotly contested seat, a flip seat here perhaps, mm-hmm. right? Is it important for me to know what a congressperson feels about abortion? It has nothing to do with them and everything to do with us. We shall vote. Uh, I mean, the only, the only thing, and, and Devin brought it up, is the whole Lindsey Graham, you know, a national referendum or not referendum. What the you know, it's all Lindsay, that. But, Lindsay, but to your point, yeah, Graham. they're not going to do that. Lindsey Graham means nothing not here codify. either. Yeah. It was the Supreme Court saying this is how it's going to go. So Lindsey Graham is just blowing fucking smoke. Yeah. That yeah. little turd back needs to go away. He does. Yeah. He was funny watching that guy run for president going to Iowa. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. He was. He stunk so bad, nobody wanted the free sandwiches <laughs> next to him. That's how much everybody trying to avoid that guy. Him and Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, give me my fucking microphone back. I'm interviewing Ted Cruz, and he takes it. Yeah. In his head, and he starts, the good farmers of Iowa. I'm going, what the fuck would you know about a farm, dude? You know what I mean? Your mother. Don't talk about my mother. That's politics, man. You know, he told um, George Pataki, former governor of yeah, uh, New York, uh, New York mm-hmm. like, they're in the staging area, and I weaseled in there, and he, 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 he says to Pataki, break a leg. And I, I pop it with my microphone. I go, yeah, Senator Cruz, you'd love him to break a leg. <laughs> then he'd have to get on Obamacare. <laughs> oh, you'd love that. <laughs> well, let's see, let's see what, <laughs> what old you, you, State Senator Tom <laughs> says about abortion here. And I am, I'm pro-life, and I am pro-life, including the life of the mother. And I think once life begins, we have an obligation to defend life. So no exceptions for abortion. I am somebody who is pro-life. I am pro-life to include the life of the mother. And I'm somebody who believes that life is worthy of protection. If someone is raped by, say, an uncle, so you've got a case of rape and incest, you believe that 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 girl should take that child. Wait a minute. Where have I heard that before? That's our question. (laughs) Wait a minute. Where do you live? That's our question. Your uncle, rape or uncle, that's our question. That's the great thing about that question. It's both (laughs) incest and rape. Yeah, Yeah. I mean... But yeah, the phrasing was is this quite ama- familiar. This amazing what's going on in this, uh, what, what are we calling this thing? The lab? Yeah, up let's, here? Let's call it the lab. Sure. All right. The shit coming out of the lab and just reverberating across the country, right? And like, you abuse us, you ignore us, you you use our clips. Um, well, like, we're on it. Well, they're real questions. We're, we're really you on don't it. don't rarely you, hear real you, questions. You show up here, you best be ready. Yeah. You best be ready. Because we're hunting. We're hunting for the answers, for the people. Let's hear that great question from Devin again. Okay. If someone is raped by, say, an uncle, so you've Whoa. got a case of rape and incest, you believe that that, that girl should take that child to talk. Devin, as I've said consistently from the beginning, I am pro-life. I believe that life is important, and I believe life is valued and worthy of protection. We got it. Yeah. He, whoa, 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 he, got he it. didn't answer it. No, he didn't. He kept uh, going back to that. What is but... that? Is that? Is that clever to you, Red? I'm pro-life of the... And I'm high, and that's not clever. (laughs) (laughs) I'm 
pro-life of the fetus and pro-life of the mother. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-life of everybody. I want everyone to have a life. Can you, you know? interpret that from what, what, what's he trying he, to get he away does, with? He doesn't. It? He doesn't want to say that he's that he agree. He does not want the exception. That's what it feels like to me. Okay, then he should say it. So what, what, because well, and, and to your point, which you said earlier about it's a referendum, the voters are going to decide. He said that, and he should say that as much. He's like, hey, the voters are going to decide. Here's how I feel about I, it. I don't get plain and simple. I don't get what he was. He somehow that was clever. <sighs> like like oh well, you know he's he's sort of moderate. He repeated that line, I think, because we caught one of them out. So three times there, plus another one. So it's just that's the line he's going well, with. What, which, what does he want me to believe with that? Like that a woman, um, if her health is in danger, he's okay with it. What's he trying to? Uh, g- <laughs> I don't know. I'm not buying it. It's mush. Yeah, it was kind of mushy. Yeah. He didn't get the question. He, the answer. He just repeated it. Well, now you can ask him since ha- he'll be it's, here. We'll have half a debate It's at mush least. and it's insulting. Again, you vote how you want to vote, sir. I'll vote how I want to vote. But speak plainly. Yeah. Enough. Agreed. Enough. What the, this is like the shittiest election. This is probably one of the most important midterms since World War II. Okay. I would think so. Wouldn't you? I think it's, well, yeah, I think it's very important. People are paying attention too, which is a good thing. Maybe since Reagan. Okay. Maybe I overstated it. Remember hyperinflation. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're mm-hmm. just coming out of a war. Um, economy's awful, but we weren't debating abortion and some other things. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. We weren't we at, at the brink with the Russians, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, this is really important, and, and this is the kind of crap we're getting. Where do you live? Yeah, you know what I mean. The mother <laughs> and the fetus. Yeah. Well, bull- okay, so now back to our one ring circus here in Michigan, <laughs> right? For for the for the state. Uh, what's in there? Oh, that's red. That was red. <laughs> He's fucking high. I mean, we should have like red. He's just red. Oh, uh, just get high and just bippity boppity, everybody. You back. can always close that window anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, poor red. Um. Okay, so we got the the gubernatorial race, right? Which mm-hmm. uh, okay, here's Tudor Dixon, the Republican. She's addressing a crowd of supporters somewhere, somehow, and she says this. What Friday? Yeah, but yeah, Friday to the Michigan Families United. Okay. Well, the not- sad thing is that Gretchen will tie your hands, put a gun to your head, and ask if you're ready to talk. For someone so worried about being kidnapped. Gretchen Whitmer sure is good at taking business hostage and holding it for ransom. Huh? Huh? It just went right, play it again. It just went right by my head. The sad thing is that Gretchen will tie your hands, put a gun to your head, and ask if you're ready to talk. For someone so worried about being kidnapped, Gretchen Whitmer sure is good at taking business hostage and holding it for ransom. Oh. Uh, easy room. Oh. She just better hope she wins her day job. What, what would you make of that delivery, Red? That was a joke, I think, referring to the kidnappers, the kidnapping plot, two convicted. It's a weak analogy. It was a way to work that joke in. It was. Joke. It's. Kind of a lame force joke, in my opinion. I, I, I would suggest if you've never told a joke, don't try while you're making a really important speech. <laughs> Was that your joke? Hey, Red, I, I got a suggestion. <laughs> I know you're high, but instead of like bending down, down into the microphone, you could just probably hold it up to your lips, bro. I'm high. It's heavy. <laughs> let's do it this way. But here's where, here's where that story gets worse, because then Whitmer has to put out a statement What's that it is say? so ultra serious threats of violence and dangerous rhetoric undermine our democracy and discourage good people on both sides of the aisle at every level of entertaining of entering public service governor whitmer has faced serious threats for her safety and her life and she is grateful to the law enforcement and prosecutors for their tireless work threats of violence whether to governor whitner whitmer or to candidates and elected officials on the other side of the aisle are no laughing matter and the fact that tudor dixon thinks it's a joke shows that she is absolutely unfit to serve in public office <laughs> now that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, wouldn't a better response be nice lame joke? I mean, because it was a lame joke. It was a bad joke. I, it was a terrible joke. I, 
I, I guess. You, I, I guess. It's just it, now. So now I'm getting the feeling that oh, Whitmer's kind of milking the whole. It's, it's no laughing matter. You, she, of course she's milking it. And by the way, let's just reaffirm the record. Whitmer knew from the beginning that the FBI was going after these clowns, right? Yeah. That the FBI enticed them to do a bunch of stuff. Two got off and two went to prison and a couple took a plea, right? Mm-hmm. You knew. You put a fence up around the residence. You knew. Your life wasn't in danger. Do I think these guys are clowns? Yeah. 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 Do I think if you scope out a house, you should probably do some fucking time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do I think the FBI let them, paid for it, encouraged them? Yeah. See, what I'm... But it's a lot simpler to go, these guys, these scary men were going to kidnap me. I was scared. I mean, that that plays into the whole, what you were talking about earlier, the victimization card, right? Yeah, and it does, and, and it... But I hear Tudor's joke, and I'm like, this is just not what, funny. It's kind what, of stupid. It's forced. Where, where are the issues? Yeah. Right? Again, I mean... Well, unfortunately, these are the issues nowadays. These, it's all this petty bullshit that everyone is identifying with and arguing about on Twitter so it becomes what they talk about. The media blows, dude. Yeah. Look, I look but we, a, we do eat up I mean the electorate does let, let, let me it. let me tell you how it works. Each side's got somebody called opposition research. Yeah. They're fucking private eyes. And they dig all this bullshit up and they mm-hmm. put it in a nice file and they give it to the political reporters and political season. Makes it real easy, right? Mm-hmm. Gives you everything you need. It's like a whole file and you drop it. Boom, 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 boom. That's what you get. What about Whitmer's political record? How about how about how you handle COVID? I'm, I'm, how about the business climate? I'm shocked. Well, you know, and, and her forcing that joke really just anything else she said about it, not that it would have been covered anyway, just gets blown out of the water. Nobody really cares what she has to say about what she would do with businesses and you know, getting rid of restrictions and all that garbage. Or like, was your response to COVID shit? Yeah. Why? I'm surprised she has not attacked her on that. Yeah. Nursing homes, uh, you know, the I'm, way you handle the bureaucracy, the school children, uh, crime. Is anybody covering this going to like drill her? Yeah. Because look, she's way ahead, but worried about Dixon because of her record, right? But sure. she's got a shitload of dough and I, she's stepping up to the next level next year, which is running for president. And Gavin oh, yeah. Newsom is seriously weak. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Kamala Harris, nah. No, no, no. no. Right? That's not going to happen. The She's less popular than Biden. You don't think Biden's going to run, right? I, I, I can't see it. I can't imagine it either. I not can't. when your own party doesn't even want you to run. You think Trump's running? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It all depends on his cholesterol. That's what I say. <laughs> it all does. That guy's so big, it looks well, like he's wearing a maternity uh, smock. That'll be the only thing that stops him. Yeah, and I was on a podcast like Friday, right? Friend of mine, mm-hmm. real cool, Alan Langold, used to work with him oh, at Deadline Detroit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's about five, six people on this show, right? And and they're all liberal, and they're proudly so, and I respect them, and they're my friends, right? But the show starts off with, you know, Trump had a bad week. You've got, what, uh, investigation in Georgia of him trying to swing the election. Mm-hmm. You've got... Two on January 6th, right? Mm-hmm. DOJ and the Congress. You've got, what else you got? The Mar-a-Lago. And the civil uh, AG the, in New York. The, the AG uh-huh. uh, of uh, New York State. Mm-hmm. A civil, not criminal, case on the Trump organization lying about their assets and bilking banks. You've also got one in the... Uh, There's a criminal investigation of that in the Southern District. Southern so District of too, New yeah. York. Uh-huh. And then it's been referred to the IRS and to the DOJ on that. Do you really think this is going to hurt Trump? Do you really think he's getting convicted or charged with no. a crime? Do you? <laughs> Mark, you're smart. Do you? Do I? No, yeah. no. Does uh, this being... add grist to the fire? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, you know what happens when you put it. gristle in fire, yeah. man. <laughs> we've already seen it. I mean, it has benefited him to a weird degree because, you know, victimization, right? He's being attacked. Give me your money. I'll fix this. It's, it's, it's a big political thing. The amazing thing is he's not president. Now, they have a job to do. If there's a crime, yeah, fully investigate it. The media Absolutely. loves it. But the, stop believing that this is the, the end DOJ of the road. The DOJ wants or, to get yeah. even, and right? Be, being a president, you are afford certain advantages. They're not. I just don't see them. And the Democrats don't have anything to talk about. No. Well, except abortion. He, he, we love boogeymen, right? I mean, it would be George Soros or the Koch brothers. 
Trump is slowly becoming a boogeyman, right? Everything that you find, if you identify on the other side, everything you find out about him is he's the reason behind it all. And it's just, it's not that Dude, simple. Dude, him and the election fraud, man, get fuck off yeah, with this. Yeah, done with it. Show, yeah. show me this stuff by this point, right? Stop, exactly. Stop yeah. guessing. And two, let's be honest about inflation. Your $2 trillion COVID handover, mm -hmm starts to go your trillion dollar a year deficits you know with the tax cuts i told everybody years ago we're headed for this moment mm -hmm. it's here biden helped usher it in but we've been directionless for a decade yeah, neither one of them have decades. helped. decades yeah. it's terrible yeah so democrats want to talk about anything but what's going on and, and this is the guy we're getting you're helping make him I want to talk about my kid, my future, how to get red out of the fucking Normandy. <laughs> In that window. Please. Please. He said, please. Oh, poor Greg. But, okay, so I'm on this panel. Yes. And we have Proposition 3, the abortion question, mm -hmm. right? So we know in Michigan that we have a 1931 law, no abortion under any circumstances except for the, the life of the mother. And then we got this one on the other side where they're pretending they want to encodify what's going on right now, Roe v. Wade, uh, up to viability, you can have one, then afterwards you can't, that's the law in Michigan, parental notification, no par partial birth abortion, right? No sucking the head off or mm. pithing the child at nine months, eight and a half months, can't do that. But that's what this Proposition 3 entails, is everything. You can do everything. And it doesn't encodify as the current law does, that it must be a physician. It doesn't say it. And as I'm talking to him, as a middle-of-the-road guy, you know, again, pro-choice for you. Forget sure. about what I'm doing. Yeah. I agree with that, pro-choice for you. It's not clear when I raise the question, all of a sudden, I'm like the far-right loon. And I got to <laughs> ask people on the left, why do you want to offend me when you can't even talk to the right I talk to the right. I'm the middle, and you want to drive me away because it comes up with, then you don't want women to have abortion. I go, no, I don't want either of these. Yeah, that, I want what we have now. Yeah, that's that's the people, each side will leap to the extreme portion of what would happen, right? And, and, but why drive us apart? Well, Nobody wants to be where they're taking us. Charlie, that's politics now, right? Yeah. It's outrageous, and somebody's got to point it out. And this, this, this referendum, this Proposal 3, is more than just abortion. It's also about... Self sterilization. Mm -hmm. Remember, there are no age limits in this constitutional language yeah. for a 13 year old girl that doesn't want to have uh, menstrual cycles mm -hmm. so somebody can help her take hormonal, yeah, you know, yeah, medication to, to stop it or. I mean, it, it could be extreme, but, you know, cutting off breasts or, or testes or getting vasectomies or an abortion at 14. It's my daughter. Or my son. And the only thing I really care about in life, the one where I'll end you. Mm -hmm. You fuck with one thing in my life. I will end you. And that's my fucking kid. Yeah. My beautiful, sweet, everything. Don't. Right? And you're not being honest about what you're doing. These... The, I don't know where to take it. It's us. being there's certain parts of that that are being left open for the legislature to, I guess, set limits on, whatever. But um, I don't know. I, I oh, mean, you mean set limits like in terms of viability, viability? The language is in there, but the language <sighs> is superseded by a clause that says, uh, "Yeah, you can put viability into practice, into law in Michigan, but you may not override um, the woman's." health sure. questions or her mental mm. health questions meaning uh i'm very depressed it's eight and a half months i'm very depressed so the viability I, question no longer applies to me fine we're not doing it in my household i guess my real sticking point is is it a doctor why can't a uh health care professional that's what the language said be held accountable if you butcher it why can't i know what's going on with my child I understand the arguments, right? Like sure, a child could be bullied or something. When people say to me, well, how often does somebody abort a nine-month-old? Well, I say, well, how often does somebody bully a 12-year-old and having a, uh, uh, a kid mm -hmm. when she's a rape victim? Mm -hmm. Like none of those things happen usually. We're just talking general. Give me clear language. You, you won't tell the truth. 
and we just want the truth. Where do we need to go? When does a leader speak for the people in a way that the people speak to their leader who is just a representative in the end? Okay. That's really heavy. It's true, though. It's getting that way. Yeah. So all my liberal friends, stop making me the boogeyman because the question just becomes, so you're going to vote that a woman shouldn't have an abortion. And I'm no, like, that's not. That's no. not and you know, it's I had, not X or Y. Well, it is. Of, They're saying that. And now I'm like, I actually got to think about this. Because either one of these things goes into practice. It's fucked up. Well, which, that's what, which way is easier to undo? And that's what sucks is we kind of over 50 years and numerous lawsuits kind of got to a point that, Look, the most most public polls show they do not want it overturned, right? People want what we have now. We kind of figured it out over 50 years, and now we're starting over again. We want what we have now, right? What we had, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, what we had. So if we get the uh, no restrictions at all or no exemptions, if, if I vote for one or the other, so which, which is easier to get back to the middle? If I vote for complete restriction you can through the legislation and other referendums start moving that thing towards the middle right if you create constitutional language with no restrictions that becomes the constitution how do you get it back to the middle so once they raise it i'm like i hadn't even thought of that yeah. again i'm pro your choice mm -hmm. it's not my right to be telling you anything that's how i look at it yeah <laughs> all of a sudden i'm the bad guy you okay red Yes. <laughs> See what happened when I brought the mic closer? I hit myself. You got some of that dube? <laughs> you also didn't learn how to wear headphones. Of course. <laughs> you got it's gone, bro. Dude smoked a whole fucking joint back there. Only one? Here, go, Brad, go ahead. Give us a minute to. Just a little minute of improv. <laughs> I'm sitting in a fucking window inside a building. How much work? Look at this. Look like I got put out inside. Uh, uh, this is where my, look at this. I'm, 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 I don't know what to do. I'm kind of confused because I am high. I've never seen a corner like this. That's it? That's your improv? <laughs> I mean, I'm high. Yeah, yeah, you can't do two things at once. You want me to sit here, look out the window, then come up with some shit on the spot. You told me to say three things. I guess I'm following directions too well. This is all I'm going to say, though. I do want to say this. Oh, boy. Your choice, your life, politicians just talk straight. Shit. I'm high. I can see you ain't talking straight. That's pretty simple. Red was thinking, you know, he was going to run for, what, the 13th over there? Yeah. Just the regular people. You know what I mean? Because Red gets everywhere. He gets downriver. He gets to the points. He lives on the east side of the city. That was the one that was all open, right? Yeah, so many people were running for it. From yeah, Sri Tanner. Yeah, yeah, okay. And in the end, he decided not to do it. Why, why didn't you do it, man? Well, uh, one, it was no need to just run up, uh, go try to raise a bunch of money to try to beat Mo Money. And uh, two, I just, it was over flooded. I mean, what's the point? It sounds like you couldn't raise any money. Sounds to me like he's lazy and he got kicked out of his house and had to move I live into in the, the Normandy. goddamn Normandy. You're asking me why I didn't run. I'd be campaigning from the Normandy right now. I'd be running 13th from the Normandy. That's he, all right. He don't need to be a congressman because he's king of the road. There you go. Yeah. Trailers for sailor rent. Rooms to let fit this in. But two hours of pushing broom. I'll buy you a 8 by 12 room. <laughs> King of the road. I don't even think it's that big. Shit, man. Not, a, not only did his wife take everything, she took his sense of tone yeah. and, and delivery. His spirit. He's no, seems kind of down. No, Red did it to or himself. Or high. Red did it to himself. I'll be back. <laughs> back there, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, speaking of buildings, I, I just wanted to get to one. I want to just tell you how all of this works, Okay. Huntington Bank, which used to be Chemical Bank, just opened a new headquarters. Mm -hmm. Of course, they don't own the headquarters, but we'll get to that in a second. So, the CEO of Huntington, formerly Chemical Bank, is Gary Torgau. Gary started a real estate firm called the Sterling Group. I first became Gary and his influence in this town when I found out he sold the Guardian building 
to Crooked Bob Fucano for three times the appraised value. That was him? Yeah. So you get some money or you get some property, you go to your buddies, you give some campaign, this and that, oh, and you make a shitload. Gary and the Sterling Group also bought the state fairgrounds from the city for $9 million. Then turned around and ended into a $400 million plus development deal with Amazon. <laughs> so we got nothing. We got $8 million because the city of Detroit bought up a $1 million from the state. And then there's supposed to be a bus terminal. It was going to be $8 million. Yeah. City comes out, even gets a nice bus terminal and some jobs. Except we forgot to add in the other $9 million. So we're now nine million in the hole because the bus terminal actually cost seventeen. We oh. just did the math wrong. Oh man! All right, Gary and the Sterling Group also bought a piece of property, center of uh, downtown, center of Detroit, for two million. Sold it to Wayne State for sixteen million. See how this works? He's incredible at flipping these properties. Now they they need they're going to move from Midland Chemical Bank, which yep. is now Huntington Bank, downtown Detroit. Get a piece of the action. It's alive down there. Okay. Okay. We're not going to take any public subsidies on this $100 million skyscraper. <laughs> they took $30 million in subsidies. <laughs> we paid for that. The school children, that, that, that's school tax money. Mm -hmm. Right? You, get, you don't have to pay property tax for, geez, 15 years, whatever the terms are exactly. I forget, but I know about it. Then it comes through as they're voting on this new headquarters that it's not actually going to be owned by Huntington Bank. It's going to be owned by, what was the name of that firm owned by uh, Turgow's kids? GPC Adams LLC. Yeah. 50% now, owned by Turgow's. GPC. Uh, yeah, GPC Adams. So mm -hmm. G GPC Adams is going to be half developer, and there's a, on the, uh, the other half of the developers are located in New York. Who they were exactly, they would never say. They would never say. Now the developers are going to own it. That's right. Gary Turgos kids are going to own it hmm. and then lease office space to the bank. Oh, that's a good deal for them. It's really nice. At Dad's almost bank. double yeah. the square footage cost of the average class A office space in Detroit, downtown Detroit. Almost double. Really? Yeah. So if, if class A office well, space on average was going for 25, they were going to pay in excess of 40. Wow. Right? Okay. How's this remotely possible? So who? it's a publicly traded company. So the board of directors votes on it. Mm -hmm. And they say, it's great. It's unanimous. That's perfect. The CEO's kids charging us exorbitant rates. Yeah, it's good for the bank. <laughs> Who's on the board of directors? Among them was former U.S. attorney Barbara McQuaid, now seen all the time on MSNBC. Yeah. Friend of Mayor Duggins. Well, he was going to run her for governor till I asked her. All right, so let's see. This is neither Democrat, Republican, black, white, male, female. U.S. Attorney's Office, county government, city government, state government, school districts, the development authorities. We don't have a chance. Nope. That's, that's we don't have a chance. You can't beat all that. But now you know. You, you, no, it's all intertwined. This is the stuff to be asking. This is why, this is why you don't rent an apartment from a lobbyist who you're taking money from. Exactly, yeah. At the, at the absolute very least, simply for perception. At the incredible least, but... And then you can get away with shit like, like this new bank deal. Yeah. Then, you know, n nobody's actually sleeping in the living room of the lobbyist putting this deal together. <laughs> Uh, they did have a comment, too, about the new building that they just recently learned that the building was sold to a third party. As, as the major leasee of, of that building, you just recently learned it and you don't know who this third party is? I don't believe that either. Oh, so the kids sold the building? Uh, that's, what, that's, what, that's the claim from the Huntington spokesperson. So the kids just sold the building They were initially that we're paying for and we're not told yeah. the building's been well, sold? Well, and for Huntington to act like they just found out and they don't know who this third party is, I just I don't find that believable. Crap. What else? What else does Turgo do? I mean, besides that, you said he sat on a few boards. One being oh, uh, uh, DTE. DTE. So there you go. They're all intertwined. And then I found out just earlier today, looking at their board of directors, that Dave Brandon, former uh, head of Domino's, former Michigan University of Michigan athletic director, yeah, is also on that you board. You don't like him because I don't like him. No, why? Because I don't like the way he ran that athletic department. Just because they lost, you wouldn't care. 
No, I didn't like the way. Uh, as someone that donates and spends money with that athletic department, I don't like you the way donate you donate to the athletic department. You know, I, I, I'm kind of forced to what? if I want tickets. So, oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, there's a, there's a. I don't and I don't, I don't like disclaimer? the as a well. Is that a big secret? I don't know. I don't like. I don't like the way you're in. I don't like the way what he did at Toys R Us when he fell upward for that job too. But whatever, he did a good job with Domino's. Talk to people that worked for um, Domino's and Velasquez. I was Vla- the mail order company. The remember they'd send coupons out. That was his other company. No, dude. I was, I was, okay. I was busy I'm, doing I'm, interesting right, things fine. with my life than looking at my mailers. <laughs> so uh, I must have been in LA partying my I'll balls stop. off. I'll stop. I don't like him. I don't know why he's on that board. End of story. Oh, I was just going to say, Domino's has a whole call center now to order to go pizza. You call to India to order your pizza from uh, yeah, down the street. Yeah. Is that true? Is it, is it Domino's? I know some of them did. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. You, you got to call Bombay to get a pizza pizza. Yeah, which they're probably just filling it out on the app like oh, you would if you had the app. Yeah. We are so fucked. But on the bright side, I guess, you know, GM workers got to come back, the white collar workers, three days a week. Got to come back to the really? red cent. Really? Yeah, you know when? When? I didn't say. 2028. I didn't say. I didn't say. <laughs> Eventually. Some bullshit. Just move that line down. Right, yeah. It's the same time Doug in, you know, like he's suing the census because he doesn't believe that people are leaving his lawless city, right? The, the, the pension balloon payments yeah. are coming due 200 million a year okay, on, little, yeah. on, into, on into the next decade. Right, and you're not collecting income taxes because n- nobody doing white collar shit wants to put their pants on and come to work in the morning. He loves suing, man. Fuck, I just—it's just funny that came out. Yeah. Just this, all this shit just comes when we're on air now. <laughs> you know what is that? Hmm. Don't worry, I write it down. Coincidence. I now. can tell him. I live in the hood. You ain't got to waste money <laughs> suing. Ain't nobody there. <laughs> Listen to that, though. That's that's, that's right from the elevator shit. Yeah. From Sock Puppet Theater. It's Red's Two Cents. And now... Red's Two Cents. Red's Two Cents. Don't waste our money. <laughs> Ain't nobody there. Huh? We'll, we'll work on it. It's two sentences, two cents. That works. I like it. We're, Red, we're, we're workshopping it. Yeah, Red, don't you know the first thing about being a comedian is you just, you just throw out your jokes, the, the ones you got rehearsed and shit. Uh, f- fortunately, I didn't rehearse anything for today's show. Uh, I couldn't have told you. <laughs> All right, well, let's real quick and get out of it. Let's just, hey, uh, what, what, got what? Well, there's someone on the phone. Oh, 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 we, yeah, we got, a, I forgot, we got a number. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the number? If you, if you want to call in quickly. It's uh, 734-5NB-NEWS. That's 734 Let's work on that burn, right? 734-5NB-NEWS. Seven three four five N B. I think I scared news. him though. He hung up. Oh, did he? Yeah. Way to go. Wait, There's a lot maybe of pot smokers it. not going to call in. Did. That's confusing. Let's see. Is All this right. him? Yeah. Who's this? What's your beef? Hey, this is Gary. How are you? Gary Turgo. Hello. What? Right, Gary has his computer blaring. Well, what? What's up, Gary? Yeah. Who's this? What's your beef? Hey, I just wanted to say I learned more and. Uh, an hour twice a week now listening to you than I do the entire week on the regular news channels. And I really appreciate it. My man. Thank you. And, and uh, just, you know, just for honesty sake, I don't know you and I didn't tell you to call in, did I? No. All right. I appreciate that. Thanks for ca- talking to me and uh, go for it. You guys are doing a great job. You got it, Jim, and I'll see you at Mom's for Thanksgiving, okay? <laughs> okay, thanks. That was nice. Yeah, that was a nice guy. That was real cool. Nothing wrong what with some... What time they served the pudding? <laughs> <laughs> pudding. What time you got to be there? Fucking pudding head over there. <laughs> 7345 NB News. Okay, um, dude, play the clip. Dan Campbell, coach of oh. the Detroit Lions. He goes for... Fourth down in various yardage, five times in the game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're up by three. What's their left? Less than two minutes? Up by three. They have about 120 left, I believe. 120. Mm-hmm. It was a terrible decision. And 
instead of going for it or punting. He could have punted too. You got which, the best punter in the league. Yeah, I still wouldn't be nuts about that. But he did. He did we'll get into that. Yeah. He decides. He's sending in the, the field goal kicker who can't kick field goals. Nope. He's already missed a few. Yeah, and mm-hmm. he doesn't got that late. 54-yarder. He just doesn't yeah. have that late. And when you miss it, that's where the other team will pick up and start from the spot of the ball. So even if he went for it and didn't get it, you're still saving yourself eight yards. So yards. everybody's bitching, like, why didn't you go for it, right? Mm-hmm. And this is what he had to say after the game. For me, I, I freaking regret my decision there at the end. I should have gone for it, fourth down. And, uh, you know, told the team that I should have gone for it. I mean, he's owning it, right? He's admitting that he made a mistake. I, I, look, I, I guess that's baby steps. I don't think he should have went for it. You if don't the, think he should have? There's 125. The Vikings got, what, one timeout? Right? Yeah. You got the best punter in the league. First of all, go up to the line, give it the old Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah. See oh. if you can draw him off, right? If you don't, you take the five yards and you try to pin them. At worst, they're on the 20. Instead of the forty-five or fifty, I oh boy, with one twenty-five and one time. I think you just go for it. I, why? You're uh, winning because yeah, but you're making a one. If you kick, if it, well, okay, aside from the field goal, yeah, it's still a one possession game. If you if he makes that, that okay, that but if you, goal, so if you ride on the defense, right? Which I wouldn't ride on that defense okay, personally. Defense, I would I would trust that offense to pick up four yards. The the, I, the line is not stout. I'll, I'm going to tell you that defensive line is not stout. They got a lot of they trouble. They're, they, they're they banged up. They're they injured. lost. They, yeah. uh, they lost their safety. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're going to have some issues. But why wouldn't you blitz? Middle linebacker, put some pressure on the dude. Cousins is a statue. He throws it over the He's middle. Awful. You tackle the guy, they call a timeout. As soon as that happened and they missed it, it's like, well, this is the NFL. They're going to score a touchdown. It's just you, for some reason, the NFL, you just let people get the, keep the ball in front of you, keep the ball in front of you, keep that clock running. I don't know. I wasn't a fan of the decision when well, you made look, it. No, here's the thing. If you're down by three, right? Yeah. You're enticed to go for three to tie the game. If you're down by six, you're definitely going to use your fourth downs to try to get that touchdown. So that's the chess of the game. I just didn't get the chess, but everybody seemed to miss this one. It, it's the end near the end of the first half. The Lions are kicking their ass. Yeah. They're up by seven. Get into the locker room. He decides to go for it on fourth and two yeah. from the 50. And they don't get it. You give them the short field, and they go punch it in. If you're improved, if you're better, you, you, it's not the three and thirteen in one season where everything's a gamble and there's nothing to lose. At some point, you gotta see that you're better, and that you play the game in a proper managerial style. If you're gonna be if aggressive and grit, and that's your that's how you're describing your team, and you're four of six on fourth downs up to that point, you're an NFL team with a good offense. Four or five. They were four or five. Okay. They should go for it. If that's your identity, be aggressive. Get the fucking four yards. End of story. End so, of the game. Sometimes game's over. that's not your identity when you're in ball games. Sometimes you well, kick I, it. I think it's the nature of coaches to be very conservative when it comes down to it. They're scared to make a risky decision. Yeah, like and that. then we wouldn't be bitching. You know, it's yeah. like we'd be bitching about the hey, D and not the coach. Any decision, if it worked out, it's great. If it doesn't, it's bad. But from the start of that, it was just I just did not feel comfortable with that. I just Motor City dad it up with the Riverboat gabbling, man. I mean, you're in games. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna need help. You know, I mean, yeah, they're still a seven win team. <laughs> that's yeah, really yeah, that, that's it. our hope. I mean, they're not gonna be in the Super Bowl. I, their schedule's not that tough. Is the way I'm looking at it, you know. So yeah, they um, third at last week after that victory. Yeah, most of the money for the futures to win the Super Bowl. Kansas City, Buffalo, Detroit was third. Gamblers were putting the money on the value that they would win the Super Bowl. Yeah, not that. That was a waste. Did their odds drop to be number three? I mean, there's so much money. No, no, no. Money just moved on them. Oh, I'm sure they dropped because of the loss, too. Yeah, but but they're not like the. Money piled on them. Yeah, money. A lot of money came. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think so, man. Hey, at least the game's entertaining. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, And what about the Wolverines? All right, so they Big Ten season opener. Not worried about them. They did what they needed to do. If that's JJ's worst game, I'll be happy with it. Yeah, JJ McCarthy, right? The, yeah, the big little quarterback controversy. In, yeah, freshman there. indecisive with the the first real defense he faces. Yeah, I there's not every four game every game out of these four games that Michigan has played. There's just not enough to take out of it. There just isn't because they played three tomato cans and they played a team with not a very good defense, really good offense. So I. College football, do you really ever know until the season's over how well, good the team was? Like almost every game in the top 25 was close with about four or five, yeah. you know, upsets. Yeah. So 
who's dominant besides maybe Ohio State? I mean, even Georgia, who'd they play? Kent State? Yeah. Yeah, they... They're pretty good, though. They, they didn't... They're pretty fucking good. Minnesota looks pretty good, too. Yeah, they do. Oh, so you get... Well, before we get to the <laughs> Sparty, look, people, relax. Especially, like, sports radio guys. These are teenagers in tight pants. Mm-hmm. Take it easy. And if you watch Harbaugh, if, you, if you've watched him over the years, what does he do to his quarterbacks? Turns out, except for maybe uh, Andrew Luck. He turns them in. They're game managers. The, you know, the Alex Smiths of the world and his whole time at Michigan. It's the don't make the mistake mentality. Yeah, the Cade, Cade McNamara's. And it was his first Big Ten start. Yeah. Re- relax. He'll be fine. He's a sophomore. They'll be fine. What about Sparty? I don't know how fine they'll be. What was that final score? Something like... 34. Uh, 34 or 7 because they got a garbage touchdown at the end. Yeah, at the, in the last minute. Yeah. So that's eight bad quarters for Michigan State. I really, I feel bad for the fans of the game. It just was dead. I it was, was in Muskegon while the game was on. Yeah. The saddest faces I've seen in the bar. Yeah. I mean, as a Michigan guy, I'm not going to feel too much sadness when State loses, but I actually felt bad for those people that win. It's like, God, it wasn't even competitive. Yeah, and Mel Tucker got $95 million. Yeah, where's that contract, by the way? Can we see that? Yeah, the, 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 the really uni- fa- Michigan State University will not release it. It's been foia Yep. Very good reporter at the Free Press is asking for a higher education reporter. And we can't get a public university's contract for the coach because you're pretending Big Matt Ishby is paying all this money. Remember, Mel Tucker is the highest paid African-American coach in sports. Mm-hmm. Right, which yeah, makes him one of the highest paid coaches in sports, and you're delivering that. So who's paying? Well, anytime you, you're is dra- it mortgage mogul Ishbia? I don't know how it, much is he paying. And when you're dragging your feet, just show us the fucking contract, right? Why are you hiding it? What is taking so long? Did Michigan pull that crap with Harbaugh? Probably. <laughs> Probably. I'm not. I don't know if they did or not. Actually, no. I think no. Harbaugh's contract came out fairly quick that you could see, but I I don't know. I don't know what. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. It looks like it's going to be another that's, log winner of mediocrity. Well, that's, just that's, that's what's funny about college sports. Two weeks ago, Al Tucker's on top of the world. <laughs> Two losses later, everyone, well, look at Harbaugh, right? Everybody wanted him gone, wanted yeah. him blown out, myself included. And now we've got real problems. And then he became coach of the year, so. What do you think about uh, University of Michigan's new announcing crew? On the radio? Yeah. Uh, I, I like Harsh a lot. <laughs> A good guy. Oh, you know, love Jansen. Yeah, yeah, I know Karsh. Um, it's you know, it's different, so it's going to take some time. It just it lacks a little, uh, it lacks a little enthusiasm for me personally. And his voice gets high, but he's called it the break. Yeah, you know, the, the pitch. I, I mean, I, I want your homeschool announcers, whatever school you are, to be just total homers. Well, and I, I, I'm, go- I'm going to need vivid descriptions. I'm going to need tonality, and they'll get there. Eh, you know what? Maybe, maybe not. If it's okay to like criticize teenagers, like it's the end of the world. Sure. The whole thing's entertainment. You're part of it. Sure. Up your game. It's also a little bit of you know horseshit because you're paid by that university, right? So you're not gonna be critical. <laughs> you, you're the one fucking paying for them, apparently. I know. Yeah. I demand more. All right. Should we just can't arrest these calls? Yeah, we can fire through them. I don't know who's on the line here. All right. Is anybody on there? Hello. Hello. Yeah, who's this, Gary? This is Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Gary? You guys are too much. Thanks, Gary. What's up, Rob? <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting an echo. I don't care. What's well, up? <laughs> Go Lions. Take the Tigers with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. You got somebody else on there? Uh, let's that. see. Nope. All right, good. I don't know. I'm still learning how to use this whole phone machine. Let's be honest. I think we hung up on them all, dude. What? And and I'm the one this high. There's only 24 missed calls. (laughs) (laughs) That's it's working pretty good. I told you. I'm trying to learn. We will get all of this worked out. Uh, I got to get my column in for the Detroit News every Wednesday this week about my take on the auto show. All right. Red, any last words, bro? Uh, No. (laughs) That is a last And my ass hurts from sitting in this window. Out of box. <laughs> Close that window on them. All right, Hot we'll box see, them. We'll see you Thursday, 6 p.m. Remember, you can go to YouTube, follow us on Facebook, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, all that shit. Go wherever your podcasts are gotten. Download us, give us some stars. Tell us how great we are. And 
We're waiting to hear from you, Congresswoman Slotkin. Yeah. Let's lock that debate in. Remember, just believe in yourself and love your babies. <laughs>